Hi guys, how you doing? This is Mr. Tybox123 and in this video I'm going to be just doing a run through of some of the new features in iOS 5 and I'm going to start off by doing it on this iPhone 3GS so we can get a feel for how it runs on the 3GS platform. So I've upgraded this phone to iOS version 5 and straight away you can see on the lock screen here that we've got a whole bunch of notifications so we've got some Twitter ones and also some email ones. Now obviously when I open this they're going to go away so let's start off with the front screen notifications. So I'll just grab one of these and all you do is you just simply grab the icon of the envelope for the email and just simply drag it over and it will take us directly to that email within the email application. And that really is the essence of these lock screen notifications anything that comes up on that lock screen we can simply slide across and it's going to take us directly to that native application. So what else have we got that's new? Well let's start right here from the top. Within the messaging application we've got the ability to use iMessage which essentially is kind of like BBM or WhatsApp Messenger built directly into the iPhone itself and what that means is, is that all the messages between iOS devices are going to go directly over either your 3G signal or your Wi-Fi signal and you're not going to be using up any kind of SMS cost or out of your out of your bulk SMS in your contract it's just literally going to go directly across the airwaves and you can either use this via their phone number or via their email address and it will automatically detect that they're on version iOS 5 and send it through iMessage and that is literally as simple as that and you can see down in the bottom here it actually says iMessage because that's the kind of transport that it's going to use for sending that particular message to that particular person. So let's work our way along here. Calendar now looks slightly different um, but not huge changes in that. We've also got the camera. Now on the iPhone 4 you get the option to edit your photos after you've taken one but unfortunately with the 3GS you don't actually get this functionality. That's just crashed out there. So for some reason we can't get into the camera at the moment. Here we go. So there's the camera there. So we've got the usual touch to focus, same menus and options that we've always had but at the top here we've now got this options button and we can actually enable the grid if we want to as well. But unfortunately once we've taken a photo we don't get the option to edit it like we would with the iPad or the iPhone 4 running iOS 5. It's literally just the same options that we've had before. While we're in this screen one of the extra options that you do get is the ability to send this directly via a tweet straight out to your Twitter. So if I wanted to hit tweet here, that will take me straight into the sort of mini tweet application and then I can literally just tweet that picture out as and how I want to. And in fact, I can also even add my location into the tweet directly from this sort of mini application that is now built into iOS 5. So let's just come out of that. Go back to the home screen. We've still got YouTube, which still looks exactly the same as it always did. Unfortunately, no enhancements to that. Unfortunately, no 3D maps, which I was hoping for. Nothing has changed in the maps application whatsoever. Weather, again, is exactly the same. Notes is the same. But we've now got this option for reminders, which is most definitely a welcome addition to the iOS platform. And what you can do in here is you can add a reminder to do a specific task like this for example we can just say done and once we've done that we can actually go in and say when we want to be reminded to do that task via a day for example say so done to that or if we hit show more here we can add in some more flexibility as well and in fact you can also add in the functionality that enables you to have a task be due based upon the location that you're in but I haven't actually been able to find this in this iOS 5 running on the 3GS version so I'm wondering if that is not available in the 3GS model 
Game Center has got some enhancements and we've now got this application called Newsstand as well and in the newsstand it gives you the ability to download both magazines and newspapers in the app store and they're going to come up directly here in your newsstand uh, just while that's come up here you can see I've actually received a notification which is in fact an email and it actually just pops up in that small little bar there along the top and then disappears shortly after if you were to click that like we did on the front screen it would also take you directly to that application so we've got iTunes now I just go into the App Store and in fact this functionality is actually already built into 4.3.3 version of iOS and that actually is this purchased area which tells you all of the applications which you've purchased before which are installed and which aren't installed new notification at the top here I'll just double click that and again we can see that's going to take us directly to the email application and we can then go ahead and read that specific email that we were notified about. Now, I'll just talk a little bit more about notifications. If you want to see your notification center, you can literally now just drag down directly from the top. We've got our stocks widget, we've got our weather widget, and we've also got all of our notifications that we would normally not have there inside this notification center. If I want to close one of them, I can simply close the cross and that will clear out all of those messages or if I want to I can actually click the message itself and then away we go straight into the application and the relevant document that's been notified of let's just go into settings and see what we've got in here so we've got the standard Wi-Fi if we click on notifications you can see that this has changed a little bit so if we actually click on the calendar for example in all of the notifications we now get the option to do all of these different actions so do we want it to come up in notification center yes or no how many of the most recent items do we want to see do we want to view it in the lock screen and then we also get the option to have the alert style so you can either have no alert a banner alert like we saw earlier or actually a full alert which is fairly similar to what we would have been useful to before and you can do this for each and every application that you want to you can also sort the notifications in the notification center either manually or via the time. So let's just have a look at sounds. I just want to check to see if they're going to allow us to change the mail sound and they are. So now we can actually choose something slightly different for new mail and also sent mail whereas before we could only change the ringtone and also the text tone. Now coming a little bit further down here, we've now got the option for iCloud. And in iCloud you can actually specify your iTunes account and you can tell it which things you actually want to be synchronized into the iCloud. And you actually get a five gigabyte limitation on that data there. So if you want your mail to be synchronized, your contacts, calendars, etc, etc, even down to this new thing here which is photo stream which stores the last thousand photos for 30 days, you can simply turn them on and off in this section here. If you go further down you can go into storage and backup and that's telling us about our 5 gigabyte data limit that we've got inside iCloud. If we click on manage storage we can actually go in and buy more storage but that's disabled in this version of the beta. If we want to as well we can completely back up our camera roll accounts, documents and settings straight into the iCloud and if you choose that it comes up with a message telling you that your phone will no longer back up your computer to iTunes. So we've also got that new functionality. We've now got Twitter directly tied into the operating system enabling us to tweet out our location, our pictures and pretty much anything from within the iOS operating system itself and all you do is download the Twitter application, add in your accounts and away you go and that will allow you to add more than one account. If we go down to the App Store settings we can also go in there and that will also ask us if we want to do automatic downloads on our apps and also whether we want to do that over a cellular network as well as over a Wi-Fi network. And what that's going to do is every time you install an application on any one of your devices that are associated with the same iTunes account it's going to go away and also automatically deploy those applications to your other iOS devices. 
let's just take a quick look over here. We've got the videos icon still, and then we've got our standard utilities that we've always had. And just to show you that this is version 5, I'll just go into the general about screen. And then we've also got down the bottom here, you can see version 5 on the firmware. Whilst we're in this screen, we've also got the ability to do software updates over the air rather than having to plug into iTunes. And we're going to get deltas for that rather than having the whole lump of the IPSW come down all in one go. At the moment it's refusing to do it, but at some stage it's going to allow us to do that. We've also got the iTunes sync, which is going to allow us to do over the air updates with our iTunes as well. Now let's just go into Safari because there were some new features within Safari. Now one of the main new features was the tabbed browsing and we can see that that is not available on the 3GS version of iOS 5. So it's going to be just the normal way of moving between your pages. So that hasn't changed at all on the 3GS with the iOS version 5 firmware. But anyway guys, that's about it. It seems to run fairly well on this uh, 3GS, a little bit slow at times. But that will give you an idea about some of the new features and how it actually performs on the iPhone 3GS. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.